right, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready for game two on our featured court. I am Tony Stumpel, the voice of college dodgeball, joining the booth now with Colby Bryslin. Quick out by Catherine Mays, off the rush. It's a good start for this Cleveland State Viking squad here. Penn State coming off a seven to one victory over UWP. Great start for them today, and they're looking to continue some momentum from their last tournament where they went wow. three and zero. Cleveland State in a bit of a rebuilding phase here, but they have a lot of young talent, a lot of good talent. Another, Another catch by Catherine Mays. You can see. There. Catherine Mays has been a huge pickup here in the, the second semester for uh, Cleveland State. OSU alum. Team throw at the top of your screen, gonna miss the mark by a couple Nittany Lions there. Stewart and Hetrick it looked like. All right, that team throw hits, both balls hit. Went to the well one more time and it paid off. Taylor right in front of us misses Sky Thornsbury. These two women in the corner here are very good at catching off their baseline. Wow, wow, what a catch through the legs. Number 13 for Cleveland State. Antoine Lamar, beautiful catch. Live arm out there too. And a team catch for Cleveland State. Cleveland State hanging in there. All right, nice stop of the balls off the wall here. All right, it is balls over. So what that means is a team has a certain amount of time, to, <coughs> excuse me, to reset their throw. Uh, in this case, they have 15 seconds, and they did not get a ball into the legitimate attempt zone within that time frame, and so they lose all their ball to the other team. All right, CSU ready. CSU ready. All right so Penn State will have all 10 balls moving right to left. We'll see what they dial up coming out of a stoppage. Team throw in the corner finds the mark. Another, Another team throw in the throw. corner. So two well executed team throws. Oh, and, a and, a, and a catch. Nice throw by Lamar there, right in the middle. Gets through the block of the Nittany Lion there. That's number 55, Blanchard, Mason Blanchard. I think Penn State realized they got to get him off the court. They put a team throw on him right after he gets that kill. So he's definitely a standout player here for the Vikings squad. All right, so the Vikings are going to be down on the 10 clock. So you just heard Colby explain that uh, shot clock rule. But what happens when you get down to five players or fewer is that your shot clock will go down to 10. So it gives you a bit of a disadvantage there. Great, Great dodge. dodge there. Penn State comfortable up on their throw line. That was a missed catch by Croft there. And we're down to two Vikings left. Yeah. Some good dodging here by this Viking squad. All right, last throw hits. All right, and his ball's over. That's two balls over in the early going. Advantage Nittany Lions on those. What Penn State wants to do here is get a couple quick points and kind of conserve their arms for the rest of the day. They do have a pretty good schedule here. They play Cincinnati later on in the day. All right, late throw, gets to the hip of the Viking player. That's a quick point for Penn State, just under four minutes. Sending a message to the Vikings, they're gonna have to lick their wounds and make some adjustments here. Yeah. 
So in most traditional dodgeball leagues, there's a, there's a hard middle line, but what you're seeing here is we have a neutral zone because we have two attack lines for the opposing teams. It kind of makes for a more dynamic play of dodgeball because you can have some action here in the middle, off the rush, you know, in transition. It kind of what, uh, what sets our sport, you know, apart from other forms of dodgeball. Yep, lends itself to a lot of action in the middle there. You saw some, some bang bang going on between UC and uh, Nebraska there in the middle, and it can uh, make for an exciting day of dodgeball to be sure. All right, if you're, if you're Cleveland State, what kind of adjustments are you making in the huddle here quickly? I think you've got to be a little more crisp with who's throwing and when. Uh, really just the communication. They, they came out of that balls over. Penn State got a couple of kills, but Cleveland State turned it around. It just like threw two, like, two bad solo throws after that, not even communicating All right. or anything. A little exchange here on the rush. Yep, so kill for each team on the rush there. If you're Cleveland State here, you got to communicate who's throwing better. We saw a couple times where they would throw multiple times within the shot clock, and that's not necessarily needed here. All right, good reset by Sky Thornsberry here for Cleveland State. And a ball's over on Penn State. Yeah, so between the two teams in about five minutes or so of dodgeball, we've seen three balls over, and that's just sloppy dodgeball right now. So both teams gonna look to try to clean that up, and that goes back to that communication you talked about. The biggest reason for a ball's over it's a lack of communication usually. Yeah. All right, we'll see what the Vikings dial up here. All right, team throw on the, on the top of your screen just misses the mark, and that one hits. Sky Thornsberry with a well-placed throw to the knee of the Nittany Lion. Yeah, that was good, uh, good work with her teammate, William McCartney there. He makes an errant throw that goes high. And a hit. Antoine Lamar with another great hit in the middle there. Very dynamic play here for the Vikings. Really all over the place, catching, you know, throwing. He's, he's definitely a standout player here on the squad. Costello throws a catch there. He was working with Lamar. And I don't think they got the look they wanted there, just based on their body language. Again, just goes back to miscommunication on the team throw. Oh. Missed catch here by Will McCartney. Cleveland State going down on the 10. Nope, one player and they'll be down on 10 clock, so they gotta be careful here. Number 99 for uh, Penn State thought about going for that catch and uh, thought better of it. Ooh, not gonna be a throw. Not, yeah, that'll work. Oh, missed catch by the Viking there. Oh, late throw after the catch. Wow, just, just misses the mark. Sky trying to reel that in, couldn't get it. Sky Thornsberry had a nice, well-spotted throw there that was blocked nicely. Penn State's team throws have stood out to me. They've been pretty crisp. Even the misses have been close. Nice dodge by number 13 on Penn State squad. It's Nicholas Norman. He's a grad student. Okay. Sky Thornsberry is very comfortable catching on her baseline here. She's definitely going to be looking for one here. I expect a, a team throw here on the bottom of your screen. And Sweeney had just gotten taken out there. Oh, she went for it too, like you said. And another right. missed catch by the Vikings. So Penn State just thriving with the team throws. When they get to stay up front and set it up like that, they're pretty deadly there. Another quick point, like I said here at the beginning of the match, they won a couple quick points and kind of rest themselves for the remainder of the day. Cincinnati is probably going to be you know, one of the hardest challenges they've faced this season. They want some revenge here after uh, the last time they played, Cincinnati kind of put a whooping on them. They're looking to reload here and kind of show what they're made of. Penn State definitely showing why they had such a rapid ascent in our recent power rankings that they're 3-0. Uh, was no fluke at the last tournament they played in. Absolutely, absolutely. With uh, dominant play against uh, UWP here, and then uh, now a uh, very, very good display so far uh, against Cleveland State. I will say this, this Viking team, I, Lamar was not there last week. They do look like a different team with him. Unfortunately, right now they've run into a bit of a buzzsaw. But 
they're not out of it. It's early. A lot of dodgeball. A couple catches go their way, and they can turn this thing around. So, yeah, we've seen teams come back from a, a, a two-point deficit many times. It's definitely not out of the realm of possibilities here. They got Rockamore coaching them on their sideline there, so we'll see. Uh, oh, down goes Catherine quickly. So they got to. She's got to not take those chances on the run up. She's an important Viking here. Yeah, she, she's one. She's probably the most tenured player here on this squad, and I definitely think she needs to be more careful off the rush and not, not you know, risk herself like that. She's much needed throughout the point. All right, so things have slowed down a little bit. Penn State, right. long throw cut. Reels in an easy catch there. Penn State not gonna let the Vikings get off their back line much. Really controlling the neutral zone. All right. Costello again out. I think just nicked his side. Very honest player. Yeah, you can see the frustration there. You know he missed the block and kind of took a cheapy there. Same with Yates, who just got clipped on the side, so. The uh, crowd thought that uh, Tapia Maynard maybe went over the line there as he was trying to get that ball back, but not gonna get the call. Another solo throw takes out another player from uh, the Viking squad here. He still got Lamar, so the, the, the points points not over yet. Yeah, they're going to need a couple catches to get back into it. You can see Lamar was looking for one right there. And a catch. Oh. Penn State oh. with a catch takes out Lamar here. I thought from my far away angle that looked like it went between the legs and hit the ground as she, you know, as they went down for the catch. But all right, number 99, White for uh, Nitty Lions steps over the line, and the last throw hits the mark. There, we are 3-0. Penn State averaging about uh, five minutes or under per point here, so they're just all over this this Viking squad right now. Yeah, if I'm Penn State, I'm, all I'm saying in the huddle is more of the same. Keep it up. Let's get it. Let's get a rolling clock by half and uh, make this an early game. Yep. For those of you just joining us, we're at the War here, in Akron, Ohio. Sixth is, annual. Sixth annual. So this has become one of the biggest events, at least by teams attending, one of the biggest events that we have all season, uh, which is great. You know, uh, it's good to see Nebraska make their way out here. Uh, one of the biggest things for Nebraska is just trying to get experience playing other teams. They're, they're so far away, they don't get to travel as much. So it's great to see them uh, here during game one. This is part of our second slate of games here. Cleveland State, Penn State going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Please remember, uh, if you're just joining us, subscribe to our uh, YouTube page, subscribe to us on Facebook, like our post. We'd love to get our engagement up as much as we possibly can. And just and You noticed there, Catherine Mays did not rush. We talked about her not wanting to get out on the run-up again, and they made an adjustment, so. Good on them for, for realizing that was a, a hindrance on their, on their ability here to take points. Ooh, Lamar couldn't reel that catch in. That's a big get for Penn State. All right, Sky Thorns maybe the well-placed throw there, well-placed reset. Number 99 for the Nittany Lions. White has made a couple nice blocks right in front of the booth here. Again, with the discipline on the throws here, you didn't have to throw that. We already had a reset from Cleveland State, and so that's just unnecessary. That was a well-placed well, well -placed throw. Oh! Well, a couple Nittany Lions are gonna grab some pine here, and one uh, step over the line, another got immediately tagged after that, so a little momentum for CSU here. 
Great dodge. Another dodge. It's Costello up there in the top corner. He's doing some nice work dodging those throws. That's wow, amazing. what a catch. That's an easy catch, and that'll bring in Lamar. So that's a big swing for the Vikings here. They'll look to keep this uh, under a four-point spread if they can. Good teams win games, great teams cover. Oh, a drop catch by Penn State. And a nice counter by Sky Thornsberry. She knows timing was good, the spot was, and she got away with one. Lamar backing down the entire Nittany Lions squad by himself right now, just slowly walking the middle. He had no help there. Cleveland State's got to do a better job protecting him. We had a saying when I used to play, if you got a ball, get up. You got to be supportive of your players. You can't be ho holding the ball on your baseline. That doesn't do any good. Nice counter by Catherine Mays. Going to take out gold for the Nittany Lions. So a little trade there. Thornsbury also got tagged. So that's a nice free counter throw there. Kind of slows down number two here at the top of your screen for Penn State. Yep. All right, great dodge here. Yeah, that was a good throw by Sweeney early, and that protected Costello, and then they missed the team throw, so. Costello gets Stewart to reach there. Hunter Stewart, sophomore. So, right. just Dola. like that, Penn State's numbers are slowly dwindling. Catherine Mays with another great counter. Sorry to interrupt you there, yeah. We said earlier, the key to the, oh, ah, spoke too soon. All right, Souvenir City, and that, that hurt. Got a ball hitting a heavy water bottle, hitting my throwing hand here, so. Costello's the key player left for the Vikings right now. Ooh, oh, couldn't reel that catch in. Just couldn't corral it. I think that was the right play. They were down, they were down uh, players trying to get back into it there. All right, Penn State getting a little lazy there. Yeah, they're just kind of throwing these lazy solo throws one by one so there was that one will take it. team throw got her that time takes out Sweeney for the final out of the point and yeah Penn State jumps out as you alluded to that 4-0 four, uh, four lead uh, another rules quick with this format is uh, anytime a game gets extended to four points or more uh, lead the clock will begin running now if Cleveland State gets a point gets it back down to three we'll go back to a normal play stoppages but now Clock will run, it can only be stopped for uh, injury timeouts, referee official timeouts, things like that, and then Correct. team timeouts. Correct. Yep, so running clock, we're more than halfway through, 11 to go. Penn State jumping out four and up, and thank you again for joining us at the War in Akron, sixth annual. That team's traveled far and wide for this one. Nebraska, 12 Wisconsin, hours. Platteville, each making long, long drives to get here and face some of the best teams in the country right now. We'll see if uh, the Vikings can maintain a little ball control here. They've got the ball count about, about even right now. Oh, Penn State with an effective wall ball throw there. Going to get that bounce back. That will not help their cause. By their cause, I mean the Nice stop Cleveland by Kathy Mays on the baseline here. That'll help. One of the key differences you see from the from more of the top tier teams and kind of the middle of the pack to bottom teams is their discipline with the balls. You know, their communication, 
You know, Penn State's getting a little bit lazy, a little accidental with their ball control, but they're in the driver's seat now. So, but the first couple of points here, they were very disciplined and communicative of who was throwing and when. Meanwhile, Stewart had a nice cross throw. It caught Catherine Mays sleeping a little bit there, and now a nice uh, catch right catch. in front of us on Sky Thornsbury. So, a couple big outs for the Nittany Lions again. All right, Lamar with a great hit on number six, Groob. Yeah, so Penn State is content to keep this pace very slow. Another out there, slowly picking off players. Yeah, that was Kyle Yates getting taken out. And a catch by the Nittany Lions again. Penn State is extremely comfortable on their throw line right now. Double solo throws here. Their bread and butter's been those team throws out of the corners. They might as well just stick with that. They've got ball advantage and numbers right now. I wouldn't be doing anything else if I'm on their sideline telling them what to do. Yeah, but do they want to like, throw their arms out? Is what you're saying. Like, they, they could be just content with just blocking. That's what you would think. We're down to one single Viking left, and that's McCartney. McCartney calls himself out. The ref, ref thought he was safe, but that's a good, honest player right there. And I tell you, that's one of the biggest things you want to see in this league, integrity. Dodgeball is the ultimate test of character. Nobody knows better than the person that got hit whether or not they actually got hit. So when you see people taken out like that, you love to see it. Yeah, it's good for the sport. I mean, the officials can't see everything. You know, there's, there's a lot of dynamic play, a lot of things to look at here. And so, you know, the, the more honest our players can be, the, the more prosperous the sport will be. Absolutely. 5-0 here in the first half. We'll take a look at what uh, some of the spreads were for today. Um, Penn State was favored by five and a half, and they are getting close to that line just in the first half already. So uh, Cincinnati was favored by three and a half over Nebraska. Ended up Nebraska covered. It was a three-point spread there, yep. five to two. So. I think the three and a half spread was a bit generous. I mean, oh, yeah. UNL's a good team. Cleveland State gets a big kill early there, and Penn State going to kind of go back to wall ball and try to see if they can get ball control, and then they'll set something up from there. throw by Penn State will not count. Yeah, that one just got yeeted onto the other court there, so. All right, so now Penn State, I, I, the Penn State mini lines either seem just kind of bored or they're just enjoying themselves, just throwing up solo after solo right now. Nice wow, catch what a catch. by Stewart. Just sort of toying with the Vikings a little bit. Oh, Lamar with a missed catch at the top of the screen there. I think it's a mix of uh, playfulness and complacency here from the Nittany Lions. I would agree with that, yeah. They've got a big lead, and they're content to just kind of sit on it. Oh, nice. A good cross, but a great catch. That's a big get. That gets Costello in. He's been arguably one of the top two or three players for Cleveland State. We'll see what he can do here. What I, meant, what I meant earlier about ball control was the fact that that second throw wasn't necessarily you know, beneficial in any way. You know, and, and Cleveland State hasn't had ball control this entire game. Coming up on the five minutes to go mark here, first half, Catherine Mays is doing a nice job drawing tons of throws, and unfortunately she lets one slip and throws a catch. Penn State playing with their food a little bit here. 
Yeah, they're being a little smarter with some of the solo throws, throwing some crosses and things like that, but yeah. you haven't seen too many team throws from them this point right now. And Stewart, the Ninny Lion, gets taken out on the far side there, so. <laughs> Nice counter by Thornsbury. Long wind up. Ooh, great counter. Cleveland State playing a little wild now and then not getting back. There's a kill in the middle for the Vikings, but Cleveland State playing into Penn State's uh, chaos in the middle a little bit here. And it's really not benefiting the Vikings. Advantage, advantage Nittany Lions right now. with the seven to five man advantage here. And there's a seven Catch to right in front of us, nice play there. Way to stick yeah. with it. Brings a player right. in. McCartney and Groove, a little gamesmanship here talking. Beautiful catch by McCartney in front of the fans here. That brings in Lamar, so. And then a counter takes out Leonard, so don't look now, but. Cleveland State grabbing some momentum here, looking to maybe steal a point before halftime. <laughs> Just under three minutes to go here. Three, oh. Three Vikings, six Nittany Lions. That's a nice stop in the baseline there to keep that ball. Another good cross. Number seven, Eck, seems to be uh, content with staying uh, roughly at Cleveland State's throw line and just throwing crosses. It's a little low in the action here. Both teams kind of playing into the shot clocks. Nice cross by Will McCarthy, just misses the mark. Yeah, Cleveland State just kind of trying to take what Penn State gives them on crosses, but nobody home on the team throw right in front of us by the Nittany Lions, so. All right, number, uh, number six up there, Gould uh, with the uh, good catch. Him. Power! Oh, and McCartney dodges the initial throw in the late third throw, clips his head there, so. Penn State's doing that a lot today. Oh, a Just like that, Penn State finishes off that one. We're gonna have a little time to roll to the second half, but time like. And head ref Jason Hallman will get us started here. Second half action underway. A little quick exchange here off the rush. <laughs> Tapia Manning gets taken out there. CSU unfortunately didn't get the rebound off the kill there, but good block by White, saving our uh, streaming equipment from having an errant throw come their way. So the bounce backs right now kind of going Penn State's way a little bit. That was a nice stop by Costello in the corner over there to keep that ball on his side. Long cross, oh, oh and that's a big face shot on Sweeney there. Blanchard with a nice cross there, ended up being a team catch. Yeah, at least he threw a bit of a change up there, so. That's the kind of thing you get from this pinch grip is you get the movement on the balls, which is which is which makes this uh, this form of dodgeball super electric. That's right. Some of these throws, some of these guys bend it like Beckham, you know, like that throw had a few feet of movement on it for sure. I mean, you saw Brett Liming in the first game. I mean, his his over the top throw would start at your face and end at your feet. All right, a quick exchange there. Uh, one player each out uh, from each squad. Another long cross by Blanchard, kind of little peekaboo throw behind Golden Hetrick there. 
Penn State applying all kinds of pressure. Oh, Sky Thornsbury just missed a catch. All right, and another out. Yep. Team throw headshot there by the Nittany Lions. Excuse me, the uh, Vikings are down to just five players left. Excuse me, four. So they are definitely down on the 10 clock and they gotta be careful here. <laughs> 24 minutes to go, so we've all had a oh, wow. suicide, a but catch. it was caught by Lamar there and Blanchard just kinda walks across. Wow. Lamar, he just yeeted one into the rafters. A little bit of, a little, little bit of losing his grip there. Oh, Ooh, wow. Nice dodge. He like wanted the catch, but then that ball kind of tracked. Oh, good wow. peekaboo throw by Stewart. Then Lamar gets tagged with a team throw. So it's just complete control by the Nittany Lions of Penn State right now. Gold with a nice throw away from his body there. Looks like he was going for McCarty, man. I'm going after the other yeah. player. Tricked me out. I thought he was for sure throwing him McCarty. There again, went back to the well near Sweeney again. Hey, stick with what works. It's working for Penn State right now. Yeah, Penn State's got everything going for him right now. And there's a catch by Stewart. All right, they're about to set up a team throw, it appears here, on Will McCartney. I kind of miscommunication for Penn State on that team throw. I expected a third ball to come in. They've done that a couple of times where they'd have the team throw and then somebody throws a split second later. White with the suicide gets him there. Oh, all right, Jason Hallman was all over it saying he launched after he had already crossed the line. So, and there it is. <laughs> Tapia Manin just takes him out, says, all right, let's get this point over with. But quick little rules clarification. You don't see many players do that jump throw over the line. That's affectionately called a suicide or a flight kill, whatever you want to call it. Um, you take up, you jump in the air, you leap from in front of your throw line and you make the throw midair while in the enemy territory essentially. No matter what, you're going to be out because you're going to land on the other side of the throw line, but you technically, you didn't throw while on their side. So it, the throw is still legal. Jason Holman all over it saying, nope, you launched while your foot was over the line, you're out before the throw. Cleveland State looks to be down a couple players. Playing a 12v8 is, uh, is not an easy task here. The man, the man advantage has just become too much for Cleveland State to overcome. All right, Costello with a quick throw there to get the uh, the count on Penn State's side. So, ball advantage with the Vikings right now. I haven't been able to say that much in the first 30 or so minutes here today, so we'll see if they can take advantage. Um, just like that, they kind of traded four Taylor. balls for two there and Takes announcer's out Costello curse. In the corner. All right, nice cross there. All right, Taylor with a nice, nice little curve for on there. Uh, just misses the mark here. Oh, Catherine Mays couldn't reel in that catch. And we got, we got a popped ball right in front of us. 
pop ball. Ninny Lions went for another uh, another peekaboo throw and he popped the ball on his teammate. Sky Thornsberry with a great catch in the corner there. Brings back in Costello and a hit. Credit the Vikings, they're not giving up. A down fall, down fall of the pinch throw is the aspect of pop balls. When they get worn in, uh, you know, a lot of players love throwing those nice worn in balls, but it lends to a lot of popped balls here in our league. Yeah, the ball turnover ratio, pretty high in the pinch division. <laughs> Under 20 to go here, second half. Indy Lions all over the Vikings, 7-0 right now. The pace has been much slower in the second half, which I think the Nittany Lions are fine with. All right, so that catch will not count. Whistle had already occurred, there's a balls over. So one thing we noticed in the first couple minutes of the game, there were three balls over between the two teams. We hadn't seen one in about 30 minutes of play until now, so. Yeah, both teams communicating a lot better and making their throws you know, a lot better in placement. You know, kind of lends to that stat there. Costello couldn't reel that in. I feel like McCartney's been last Viking standing quite a few times here today, and he's on his way to being that again if this point continues to to go Penn State's way. All right, Cleveland State has one, oh! Nice throw by number seven, Eck there. Takes out a player from the Vikings squad. Penn State loves those no-lookers away from their body. You can tell we got a lot of baseball players here on this roster. Oh, couldn't reel in that catch. That's a good tip for uh, teams looking to recruit. Obviously, baseball players love to throw things, and if they're not going to continue their baseball career past high school, dodgeball's a great great way to transition and keep playing sports in college and stay active. So, Yeah, the skill set lends itself very greatly to this sport here. Jason Hallman saying that catch by McCartney hit the ground just before he corralled it, so no catch there. Fan nice dodge in the corner there by Will McCartney. Fantastic dodging by McCartney there. Sky Thornsberry with another kill. Oh, oh, then she gets hit pretty hard. That suicide will not kill, I or will not work. I um, I thought he was over the line on the jump anyway, but. I looked up here, that's a me too. This is another beautifully executed team throw by Penn State. In the last couple weeks, I, I haven't found many teams that are better at executing team throws than Penn State right now. I mean, every ball was right there within a split second of each other on yep. the mark, so it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, one of the main reasons why uh, the Cornhuskers were able to stay in the, in, in the match against Cincinnati was because Cincinnati couldn't reel in their team throws. They were. They were, they were off the mark, they were errant, and they were just getting caught off the team throws quite a bit. But Penn State has been crisp, they've been disciplined, and it's gonna, it's gonna lend to them being successful you know, later on uh, come Nationals time in about a month here. So the clock will continue to run, 16 minutes to go, second half. This is part of our second slate of games going on here at the sixth annual war in Akron. Up next, we will have Ohio State and Cincinnati. Little rematch from last week. That should be a good one. Ohio State's gonna be looking for revenge. Penn State with a strong start to this point. Yet again. Nice counter throw by Gold. He gets countered too then. 
not the camera. That ball comes right into the camera here, so that can happen. We're in close quarters here. We might have lost the stream. We're going to switch to our backup camera. Tapia Manning gets taken out right in front of the screen. Stick with us, folks, is why we got two cameras going at one time here. That can happen. There it is, another team throw kill by the Nittany Lions. Nice and catch Lamar with by the catch. Lamar. That'll, that'll reset the shot clock as well. That brings in Yates. When you're on a 10 count, uh, throws and catches reset your shot clock. So that catch there was huge from Lamar because they were about to have a shot clock violation. Jimenez baited a throw there from Costello. Long cross by Blanchard again, nobody home. Nice. Real high, a point blank catch. Yep. Cleveland State really wants to get on the board right now. They've got to play discipline. They can do it. If, if there's a time to do it here, it's right now. They got some of their better players in, Costello, McCartney, Lamar, and Catherine Mays. So and you, ball advantage. And ball advantage. So, so if now's the time to play discipline, it's right now. They got ball advantage. They got Penn State down on the 10 clock for the first time today. All right, Catherine and Lamar are going to charge. Woo, Lamar Ooh. going head hunting a little bit there. When I used to play, I used to tell my players face or feet, and that's what Lamar went for, the face there. Yeah, hey, Lamar again there, you know, change the eye level, make them think it's coming at their head, they get flat footed a little Absolutely. bit and drop one on their toes. Ooh. Right out. Oh, yep. they're going to say Groob had control of it and that he, yep. he was disarmed there. That was a very good heads up play by the Viking player. Yeah, the debate would be on that call potentially, did he have possession of the ball when the throw was made or did he kind of do a chest pass and balls collide, but Trey Sumrall was all over it there. So Penn State only has two balls on their side, so there's no count for a team when they only have two balls on their side. Another little rule with that shot clock. They, they now have a clock. Now they three. do. Next throw will put the Vikings down on 10 clock as well here, so. Lamar's got a really live arm here. He's just got to slow it down a little bit. Be accurate here. Obviously clock not a factor for CSU trying to get back into this one. They'd love for nothing more than to get a point right now, so. And that's big for the Nittany Lions. They're getting Lamar off the court on the cross by Blanchard, and he stunts a little here right in front of us. catch. Good catch by Yates running backwards for that one here. All right. We've now got a pretty decent man advantage here for Cleveland State. Team throw just wide of the mark on Jimenez there. Nice block there. That's a grad student, Norman, with a headband and longer hair. Yates diving for the team catch. Great awareness, great That's awareness. Good, good heads up play to stick with it, save his teammate and get another, get another uh, Viking on the court, but. 
All right, so Holman made a call there. She's got to come in from the baseline, didn't do it. That's a tough break for the Vikings there. Meanwhile, Jimenez had also made a catch on a team throw, getting McCartney off the court, so that was big for them. And Gates another with another catch. catch. That's about three in the last, what, two brings, minutes? Brings in impact player Sky Thornsberry for Cleveland State. Oh, and Penn State quickly turns it around as there's a big catch by Zach Taylor, the uh, senior captain, and he got a kill in the process. So teams getting a little, both playing with a little reckless abandon here. Oh, Catherine Mays just kind of, it gets, squeaks past her block. Three on three now. Credit the Nittany Lions, like they haven't, they know they've got the game one, but they don't want to go this way. Wow. What a back double to back play there. catches by Stewart. And suddenly they've just dashed the hopes of a, of a point here by Cleveland State. They're saying ball's over before the catch there. Great play by Marty Gold, the junior, but uh, it's not gonna count. Cleveland State hung around and hung around and hung around and just Penn State just making too many impact plays here at the end. That big back-to-back -back catch really just turned this thing on its head. And that time the suicide works. <laughs> Stewart got hit by his own teammate on the back there. Not that it impacted the play at all. Just kind of funny to see. I love to see the replay of that. We got some campaigning going on by Nittany Lions saying Hunter Stewart. He's definitely been he's <laughs> he's definitely been one of the impact players here. We get down about seven and a half minutes to go here. They might play out one more point. Um, you know, who have been your impact players on each side? Uh, you know, we'll, let's start with the Nittany Lions here. Like we just said, Hunter Stewart called his name the sophomore quite a few times. Very talented Nittany Lion. Made some catches. Got a lot of throwing kills there. Really good for this, this squad. Yeah, number zero for Penn State, kind of being like a, kind of a pivot point for them. He's kind of like a, a staple in their roster, kind of keeping composure, you know, keeping communication going throughout the, throughout their players here. You know, from top to bottom, Penn State has a lot of depth. I wouldn't say they have any, you know, major standouts. It's just mostly very, very well coordinated team play uh, from the Nittany Lions here. Yeah, I would say this Penn State team, like they, they may not like this comment, but they may not have a first team All-American player. I don't know, this is my first time seeing them, so I'm saying that with a little bit of ignorance. Yeah. But they, they could pepper that second team All-America list with their depth, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah, that, that and, th and that's all that really matters. I mean, you know, you, you, have, you have high standout guys on rosters and, but, but you know what? What really matters in the end is winning games and championships, and and depth wins championships. Absolutely, and it's sometimes it's hard to crack the higher lists like that when you have such a balanced team because teams share the load. Yeah, we've there's been about a half a dozen players for Penn State that have had an impact on this game. Um, on the Cleveland State side, I'm definitely going to start with Antoine Lamar. Like he was jumping off the page early on. I think Penn State saw he was. Their most talented player definitely started targeting him, uh, targeting him. So we haven't called his name quite as much in the second half. Hunter Stewart with another catch. Yeah, and that was unfortunately on Lamar. So we'll talk that one up to an announcer's curse on me. Yates did take over that point that they uh, that the Vikings threatened to take. He had three catches. One of them was a team catch, but did the best he could to put the team on his back and get a point out of it. But. Uh, Sky Thornsbury couldn't reel that one in. She's yeah, for it. she's frustrated with that one. She normally gobbles that one up, but. Yeah. 
I'd be remiss if I didn't give McCartney a shout out too. He's been on the court so much for this team. I mean, his minutes played have got to be the highest for this Viking team in this loss. Absolutely. A couple of kills there, Stewart and uh, number 99 White right in front of us, both getting taken out. So. The Vikings are going to play hard until the last second. Nice right backhanded, backhanded throw. throw. Gets a player out here on the foot. I believe that was uh, the grad student, Norman, there. Yes, yeah. Mays and Sweeney, the last two Vikings standing here against a lot more Nittany Lions. Rob with another peekaboo throw, nobody home. So he's loving that one. Might he love it even more, but he gets in the alley. All right, Sweeney being able to stay alive here, dodging the team throw. All right, Catherine Mays, the lone Viking. Yeah, she gets nice and low to evade those throws here. She's a tough out. Next throw gets her, announcer's curse, she yep. gets clipped on the hand there, but. And this one is all Penn State. They finished that one off 10 0. I don't think they're going to play out the last three minutes here. They'll call it a day and we'll yeah, uh, get to the handshake line here. So. They're going to they're they're play oh, this all out. Right. Hey, Cleveland State saying, no, 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 no. We didn't come here to get cheated on our time. Just joining us, this is uh, our second slate of matchups here. We're gonna be bringing you six overall, broken up in the middle. The women's match will be in there, so seven, seven games in a row, three courts. This is the Akron War, sixth annual. Penn State and Cleveland State wrapping up a relatively lopsided affair here. It was all Nittany Lions from the jump. Cleveland State's had some opportunities to take some points and uh, had control of a few, but Penn State just proving to be as good as advertised. Before that, we had uh, Cincinnati outlasting Nebraska 5-2. to two. Cincinnati really starting to peak at the right time. They just seem to be getting better the closer we get to Nationals, and that's exactly what you want to see if you're a Bearcat fan right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, things just falling into place for them. Their, their rookies have been outstanding. They're, they're finally catching on to the sport and the, the pace of play, and that's, uh, you know, that's all due to the, the, the upperclassmen, you know, teaching them during practice and, and the coaching from the Bearcats here. So one minute to go here, second half. Wrapping this one up. Little double throw by the grad student Norman. Penn State just playing with just rec complete recklessness right now, but you would too if you were in their shoes, probably. <laughs> I would, yeah. I wouldn't waste my arm though. Like, like, like that throw at the top of your screen. I wouldn't be doing that. You know, there's there's, there's no use throwing all gas at this point. You know, four, you know, maybe four points in, I would have stopped throwing as much. Oh, to, to be, be young again. Yeah. McCartney with a beautiful throw and then gets the bounce back. I thought he was going to reload right away. Nice, uh, nice cross uh, hits the hits the foot of Captain Mays. I'm not sure if our we lost the video feed here. We'll switch to our backup again real quick. So, oh, McCartney gets gets cross as he was rushing up. Almost caught it himself. Sweeney with a nice counter and now. Tapia Mainin. 
Oh, and he misses the catch. Jump spinning suicide. That would have been. Maybe Penn State's just trying to make the top 10 list. Yeah, they're just trying. They're going for highlights now. Going for highlight reels now, and that'll right. end it. Folks. And that'll be it. That'll be it. Jason Hallman, the official timekeeper. Maybe back onto that camera. What All a right, dominant so main, display here from the Nittany Lions. Main feed back on. And one of the great traditions of the sport here, the handshake line. Nobody does it better than us, maybe the NHL, but they only do it in the playoffs. We do it all the time, so. Yep. Yeah, dominant display by these Nittany Lions here. After their 3-0 onslaught um, at the Beast Tournament, they're just continuing right where they left off here. And like we talked about earlier, they've had a rapid ascent up our power rankings, and they're, I think they feel a little disrespected. I feel like they think, like, somebody better put some respect on our name. How you doing, Hunter? Nice to meet you. So, we saw a, a huge dominant display here from you guys over uh, Cleveland State. We knew you were a good team, but I don't think we all realized the depth you guys have in your roster. What do you think has been the key to, you know, standing out in this league in the East Coast uh, for all season? It really helped with, it all started last year. We got a bunch of new guys into the program, and now they've all improved over that year. Got a lot better, and we've all grown. We still have, a lot of us still have another year left, which I'm excited for. And that's, that's been the main thing, really. Just our growth over the past year. We showed signs last year, didn't get as much time as we liked. But this year, uh, it's come together pretty well. Yeah, how do you expect the uh, the rest of the day to go for you guys? Well, we got a long break, which is kind of unfortunate. Four hours is a long time to wait before playing Cincy, which is going to be a really good game, I hope. Yeah. I wish we got to play them a bit sooner, just to stay a bit loose. But I'm excited. Hopefully, we can get back into it and hope we put on a really good show because they're a very good team. So we talked a little bit about your depth. Colby alluded to it here. We talked about it during the game. Who's the one guy maybe that the rest of the country hasn't heard of yet on this Nittany Lions squad that is kind of your X factor that flies under the radar that, that is going to put the league on notice here soon? I think it's got to be Noah Groob. He catches anything thrown his way. I think it's number six. Literally, anything he throws at him, hands that are unbelievable. He catches it all. And he's a senior, but I, he hasn't got a lot of recognition. And he showed out at uh, JMU Beast, and he's someone that can definitely – definitely carry this team and just get guys in for us. Awesome. I think we called his name a few times, We actually. did, yeah. So, yeah, we're so, on the same so, page. So going 3-0 at JMU Beast and then having a dominant display here, you know, what are what are kind of your thoughts at practice, you know, heading into Nationals now? Heading into Nationals, we're just going to keep doing what we do, keep working on our throw and try to refine it a bit. There's still times we're undisciplined. We're still a bit young. We still do some things at times that we know we shouldn't, and that gets us into trouble. So just refine those mistakes, going up alone, getting ourselves crossed and that stuff. That's probably going to be the main thing going into Nationals. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you for giving us the time. Congrats on hey, the win. Thanks.